Hello there. Just going to cover a few of my favorite features in um, Construct 2, which is the HTML5 editor, uh, primarily, which I'm going to primarily be using it for creating video games. So let's show you a few of the features now. If we set this to what, 1280 by 720, this is just to resize this. This is um, what the screen will be focusing on. So, if for, for example, this uh, outer layer is going to be the entire screen. This is going to be basically what the camera can see. Now, because I'm going to be working on a higher res window, I'm going to set this so it's a lot bigger. So that's 1, 2, 8, 12, 80 by 7, 20. That should fill up. So basically, the camera's zoomed out. Think of it that way. It's probably completely wrong, but this is the way I work it, and it seems to work with me. Okay, so one of my favorite features with uh, Construct 2 is the physics engine. And I'm going to show you a little bit about that now. So what we're going to do is drag this all the way across and then give it the behavior of physics. Now this is you using the box 2 physics engine. So if we play that to see a preview, what we see is it just falls straight down. Now, we don't want it to do that. I'm going to be setting this up as a border or a boundary. What we can do is change this to a bounding box. And what that does is sets the collision uh, area so it's effectively a square. Here you can set it to a circle, so it will be a strange shape. Or a um, collision polygon, where if we go in, we can actually see what the collision polygon looks like. We can change that if we want a certain shape. But what I'm interested in is the bounding box, okay? And now we want it to be immovable. So what we do is we say that, play it now, and we can see it stays there. Now, that's a good start for a border. So we're going to copy this one, put it down here at the bottom, copy it again, rotate it. If we hold down the shift button, you can get a nice rotation, okay? Let's copy that again, put that to the side, and there we have it. Okay, we're now the way we want it to be. Preview it again. And this is what we can see. And there's nothing wrong. Now, I'm going to show you what we can do with the physics engine. Or what I'm going to be doing. This is a, a character which I'm working on at the moment. His name is Red. So we put him in the center. He does nothing because we haven't given him a behavior yet. But we quickly can give him a behavior by adding in physics. There we go, click on that. Uh, let's give him a bit of an angle so you can, um, wait just one second, let me just turn this so it's a little bit easier for me to work with. There we go. Angle, angle him ever so slightly and then we play that and you can see he'll fall and drop and roll and bounce and stuff like that. Now, that is really good in the sense that he will react realistically depending on the angle. He'll move along, fall, land. Okay, nice flat physics. See, we can also give him a bounding box, maybe to speed things up or get a little bit more realism to the collision. Nice and flat, okay. So what we can do very quickly is just put in a series of these. There we go, put one up there. Okay, play that. And we can see the whole thing starts landing, dropping, nice and smooth, nice and quick, nice and fast. Very happy with that. Now, I start showing you the um, event editor. And what we can do is we can say, quickly pull in a, we want to control this using the mouse, let's say. Eventually, I'm going to be using the keyboard as well. But for now, let's use the mouse. Uh, while I'm here, I might as well load up the keyboard as well. So there we go. That's uh, providing input. Basically, it just you tell it what you want so it doesn't use resources that it doesn't need. So using the mouse you can say uh, while the mouse button is down it will say which mouse button? You say left mouse button please. Click on that, add an action. We can tell the sprites to apply force towards position. Okay. Now you say how much of a force do you want to do? Let's say 10. Now we want it to move towards the position of the mouse X position, Y position doesn't have an uh, 
image point, basically describing image points ever so quickly. If you jump in here, you can see all the different image points. There's the central one, which is the origin. You can create as many as you like, which is fantastic. Just drag them over if we want something on his eyeball, for example. So you want to put something there a bit later, maybe something down here for a mouth or up here or something like that. Then it quickly scrolls through and it's got them all in place here. Okay, there we go. So I don't want those, so I'm just going to delete them ever so quickly. Right, done. We've got the origin still in place. Now what we have here is you say when the left mouse button is down, see how simple this is? When the left mouse button is down, what will happen is physics will be applied to this object by a force of 10 towards the mouse. Okay, so gravity is still going to kick in. What we have, that all drop down. You hold down the left mouse button. And nothing happens! Why is that? Maybe the force isn't strong enough. Let's try that again. Increase this to maybe 100. See if we have any more luck with that. Hold down. There we go. Everything's... Because each item has got mass and gravity affects it in all the different ways. So we can stack that. We can swing that over here, pull that up, and it's reacting nice and smoothly. Very nice and smoothly. I like that a lot. What we can do again is, if we want to go a little bit crazy, we can do this and end up scaling them down. There we go, copy paste again. Move those to here so none of them are overlapping. Um, what we can see now is they're all reacting just the same, except now they're a lot faster because there's the force of 100 on them instead of just one. So it's all based on mass. You can swing them, they'll react, bounce, land. Fantastic. Just love this physics engine. So what we can probably do now is reduce the force down again to 10. Okay, then we play that. They all land, all happy, and now they'll all move up a bit slower. So I click, 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 drag round. So there we go. We can get some nice, I don't know, movement going on over there, release it, and they all go crashing, landing, bouncing. Fantastic. And in the good old-fashioned Blue Peter style, uh, for those who actually understand what I'm talking about, here's one I made earlier. Now, this level takes it a little bit further because what I'm doing is controlling it using the keyboard. So, when you press the down arrow, gravity shifts so it's vertically down. If you press the up arrow, gravity shifts so it's vertically up, so everything will theoretically, you know, shoot up instead of down as you would expect. Left shoots it to the left, right shoots it to the right. Now you can toggle that on and off and actually change gravity so you can turn all gravity on or all gravity off. Obviously you can't have um, competing forces so for example you can't have uh, down and up at the same time because that just doesn't make sense. So this is using my character. Let's have a look at the layout. Here we go, we can get some nice um, backgrounds and everything in. Now this is a full 2048 by um, 1536, so this is iPad 3 uh, Retina display visuals here. Okay, these are the touch buttons which are going to be controlled by the device, so the player will actually touch on these to move them. But it, uh, when we're doing it on the PC, it's all set up using the keyboard. Now here's the red character, but what we've actually done to him on this time is to give him all these different um, hot spots, okay, or image points. So we've got left eye, right eye, okay, we've got left eyebrow, all different stages, right eyebrow, and of course his mouth. And we've got these items at the top here, hidden away. Here's his eyebrows, his, his eyes. Got uh, two sets of eyes because one is controlling the um, the location and the other one is controlling the, the shine. See on here, if we zoom in a little bit, you can see it's got a nice shine on there. Now, before, the shine was always changing and rotating all over the place. I didn't like that. So what I've done is attached it to here. You can see he's got, uh, or is it the other way around, actually? It might be the other way around. Yeah, so he's got a look around. So the origin spot actually move so it can actually rotate around this center point. You'll see what I'm talking about. So if we press play now, run layout, what we see is, there we go, the character loads in. I'm still working on the timer at the moment as um, beta, let's say, and we've got our little character with his eyes and his mouth. Okay, 
Let's see, something not quite right in here. So what I'm going to do is turn off pixel rounding. There we go, I like having pixel rounding off. And what that gives us is a sharper visual. You'll probably think, well, I see no difference, but I can, I can see his mouth now, which is good. Okay, so what we can do is, you see when we started the level, I don't know if you did see that, let's press one is my refresh. There we go, see that ball drops down? Now that isn't affected by the same physics as what our main character is affected. So we press left, just to show you what happens. And the character goes left. Gravity's there, so he's bouncing down to the right. Okay, so we press right, he moves, bounces, lands, all very realistic physics. We can control him using that, but what you have to understand is we do not control the character. What we're controlling is gravity. We're just changing what direction gravity's moving in, or uh, which force it's pulling in. So, for example, if we press left again, you'll see him collide with that, spin off, go over here. Yay, it's all working well. So another thing which I wanted to be able to do is the idea of um, anti-grav, okay? And we can achieve that by, see on the left, see that uh, blue button that's lit up? That at the moment is, um, there's no gravity affecting it at all, okay? But what we can do is press right, press it again, and you'll be able to see, hopefully if he clips it, bump, there we go. So he's all anti-grav, look, and his face changes the closer he gets to that using a, a distance maths. Okay, so the closer he gets to the portal, the happier he is. He can go over there, land. Oh, he's getting sadder. Oh, he's not happy at all anymore. Oh, there we go. And he has reached the goal. He spins around, he's very happy. That's the end of the level. But at the moment, because it's still in development, that's, this is what happens. Now, what I'm adding in is the ability to turn physics on and off, um, but in the sense that it can be controlled by the player. So as soon as he touches that red ball, that is now a fact, uh, white ball. He it changes to red, and now it is also affected by the physics. Okay, so he can clip off over there. The ball can then follow. We're controlling both objects at the same time. Okay, which I think is quite clever. But the, all this is controlled by Construct Two and the Box Two, Box Two D um, physics engine. So yeah without a single moment's hesitation um, Con Construct 2's physics engine is just absolutely fantastic it's um, honestly what sold me on the product and I look forward to using it in the future because frankly it's uh, a lot of fun so yeah that's my favorite feature with uh, Construct 2